Let's talk about how the shape of our rib cage may be an adaptation for an inability to inhale or exhale effectively due to a diaphragm that can't ascend or descend the way it needs to. When we start to create the shape change, accessory muscles may pull our ribs into a more narrow position. In this scenario, we may have a very hard time getting a good inhalation and allowing those ribs to open completely. We may need to use a different strategy when we inhale and when we exhale to allow for a more passive exhalation because we don't want to start pulling those ribs down even more and a more active inhalation to start to push those ribs open so we can get the oxygen that we need. Conversely, we may have a wider, more expanded rib cage. In this position, we don't necessarily want to promote an active inhalation. We want to promote more of an active exhalation to help change the shape so we can get in a better position to have more of a dynamic capability. So let's go over the two different strategies that you might use if you notice that you're using accessory muscles like your neck or your rectus abdominis or even your low back to try to create an inhale or an exhale. Let's talk about a breathing strategy for somebody who has a very narrow rib cage and has trouble expanding, allowing those ribs to open up. In this scenario, I want you to focus on more of an active inhalation that is slow, very soft and quiet, but really allows the lungs to fill. So we're gonna start with the active inhalation. And once we get to the end of our inhale, where we feel like we can't take any more air in without overusing the muscles in our neck or in our back, I want you to then hold the air in for 10 seconds. And then we're gonna allow ourselves to take a nice, just relaxed, passive exhale. We don't want our exhale to be super long and active because we don't want to facilitate even more use of those already overused muscles that are pulling the ribs into that very narrow position. So try it with me. Go ahead and take an inhale through your nose, soft, quiet, and long. Once you get to the end of the inhale and you can't get any more sips of air, hold that air in for 10 seconds. And when you're ready, take a nice passive exhale and just feel how your ribs naturally come down, but you're not forcing it there. So this strategy could be really useful for somebody to help open those ribs up and start to create that shape change. Now, if you are on the other side of the coin and you have more of a wide barrel chest and more flared ribs and that angle's a bit wider and you have a hard time getting those ribs to come down, we can use a more passive inhalation strategy and a more active exhalation strategy where we try to use some muscles to help pull the ribs down and in a bit more. So I want you to try it with me. In this variation, we're gonna exhale as long as we can, get all of the air out, feel, feel our ribs kind of come together, and then we're gonna hold that air out. And when we take an inhale, we're just gonna let ourselves naturally inhale so we don't overexpand those ribs. So go ahead and take a small inhale through your nose. And then on the exhale, I want you to let all of the air out and keep getting it out. Keep going, keep going, keep going until you get to the end. Hold your air out. And when you're ready, just take a gentle inhale. It should feel as if your body just naturally wants to seek that air, but you don't have to work at it and, and tighten everything up to pull the air in, okay? So, Depending on which side of the coin you're on, you can focus on using these strategies just to help build a little bit better dynamic capability of the ribs moving out and in. So you're essentially trying to get that rib cage to either be more of an inhaled wider type rib cage so it can come back down effectively or a more exhaled narrower type rib cage so it can effectively inhale and exhale. Um, I hope this was helpful. If you have any questions, don't hesitate to reach out.